Hello everyone, this is Gills and Sundry. This is a tour of my local beach and an introduction to some of its creatures. I went down at one of the lowest tides of the year, a negative three on the tide charts. This beach is a mixture of sandy and rocky habitat dotted with shallow tide pools. A common sight are these small pink tip green anemones. Also common are marine snails called dogwinkles and the numerous hermit crabs that take over their shells when the snails die. Hermit crabs often have one larger pincher to act as a sort of door to their home. Here is a colony of pink-tipped green anemones and a larger colony over here. Each colony consists of clones of one anemone. They grow and split in half to produce a clone. This big one looks like it is just barely starting to split down the middle. Giant barnacles are animals that can be found attached to large rocks. These will often have smaller barnacles living on them. Barnacles are most closely related to shrimp and have a similar internal structure. Tide pools are often full of small, well-camouflaged sculpins. Can you spot this one? There it goes. Gray blue herons take full advantage of tide pools. They time their breeding season so their offspring will be fully fledged in time for the lowest tides of the year. Lower tides mean more tide pools and more opportunities to learn proper fishing techniques. Looks like this one's getting the hang of it. It caught a little gunnel. It can be a little bit tricky for a young heron to learn how to properly position food in order to eat it. Unfortunately, its sibling is more interested in stealing food than hunting for itself. Here's a photograph I got of the juvenile, and one of the adults who caught another gunnel, a fish that looks like an eel. If you've ever wondered what a gooey duck looks like on the beach, this is it. They are the largest species of intertidal clams in the world, and are famous for looking gross. I just barely missed one spraying there. Their primary defense mechanism is to dig really deep, really fast. To do this, they have to expel the water from their bodies. Here is an empty gooey duck shell. They can live up to 160 years, and after they die, their shells become home to other creatures, such as these tiny barnacles. Speaking of shells, here's the shell of a nettle's cockle, a type of clam. I also found a dead sand dollar. You can see from the skeleton that they have a five-point symmetry, a hint to their shared ancestry with the sea stars. On the underside is the hole where the mouth was. I didn't find a live moon snail on this trip, but I did find a large shell of an adult. There are two local species of moon snail, the larger Lewis's moon snail and the smaller Aleutian moon snail. Both are predators who hunt clams and other bivalves. The snails use their radula, a sort of toothed tongue, 
to drill a hole near the base of a clam shell, then eating the clam through that little hole. This is why you might find shells on the beach with near-perfect little holes in them. I have to show you some photos I took of a live adult moon snail I found a few years ago. Here you can see its breathing siphon. If you see one of these strange rubbery things on the beach, don't throw it away. It isn't garbage, but a moon snail egg case. They embed their tiny eggs between two layers of sand, all kept together with a rubbery slime. You can find these on the beach throughout the summer. Sometimes they look a little bit like toilet plungers. This is a red rock crab. When you find what looks like a dead crab on the beach, take a closer look. If you can open up the back of the carapace and see this, it is a crab molt. Like all creatures with exoskeletons, crabs have to shed their old skin to grow. They leave behind their esophagus, stomach lining, and the last half inch of intestine, and grow them back later. Flipping the mole over, we can see it belonged to a female. She would have grown her eggs here under the body on these hair-like filaments. Something I've always found fascinating about crabs is their complicated mouth parts. They have the two main jaws, and under these are many small mandibles for maneuvering and manipulating food. You can also see the small eyes on the front of the crab's face. Here is a dead male red rock crab. You can tell he is male because this part here is much smaller than a female, because he will not be growing eggs. A male's claws are sometimes larger in proportion to the body than a female's. My camera ran out of space, but I know he's dead because I couldn't open the carapace. This is a helmet crab. As you can see, it is female, and it is a molted shell. Another helmet crab, this time a male. He's missing one of his claws and is dead instead of a molt. Seems to be a weird coincidental pattern today. And as always, no beach trip is complete without seeing at least some garbage left by humans. At least this trap is too broken to catch anything anymore. When I was a kid, this part of the beach had more ochre sea stars than you could count, all over these rocks. This year, I only found one. Sea stars around here have been dying off from a mysterious wasting disease. This one looks alright, but disease stars look like they are melting. It's awful. There by the sea star is a painted anemone and an orange sea cucumber. Most people are more familiar with the large and mobile California sea cucumber, but these sedentary orange sea cucumbers are more commonly found at low tide. They live under rocks and are sensitive to changes in light. Just walking past or casting my shadow over it makes it pull in its feeding arms. Sea cucumbers are related to sea stars and sand dollars in the phylum Echinodermata. Like sand dollars, sea cucumbers feed on detritus. They use their sticky feeding arms to pick up tiny particles of food either out of the water flowing by or off the seafloor. Here is one with its arms extended. The most common things you will find under the rocks at the beach, especially in the places humans visit the most, are these shore crabs. They come in a wide variety of colors from purple to green to even yellow or white. There are also lots of small hermit crabs. Here's a little male shore crab, and a female. One of my favorite creatures to find under rocks are these giant flatworms. They may not look big, but most species of flatworms are microscopic. You can see their two simple eyes near the front of their body. I love how they move, so creepy. I'm pretty sure this is a tube worm, though I have no idea what species, 
and it is weird how they just burrow in the mud under rocks instead of producing a tube. They are fun to poke, though. This is more a classic tube worms calcium-based tube, though many species build tubes out of hardened mucus. Something I didn't expect to find so many of were these little porcelain crabs. They have very flat bodies and claws, and this one is about as big as they get, with a carapace about 2 centimeters wide. Some flatworms and a little striped worm also made it into the shot. I don't know what species that little striped worm is. Of course, while I was filming that crab, a barnacle-covered rock ground itself into my ankle. Thanks, Beach! Thanks for watching, and subscribe so you can be sure to catch my next video.